Now, I know you mentioned that you do TNR. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and what that all yeah. consists of? So the reason that we have an overpopulation of cats is because people get cats and they don't fix them and then they move and or they escape and they go outside or they toss them outside or whatever the reason they end up outside mm -hmm. and they're not fixed. So nature <laughs> takes its course and they have kittens. Um, a female cat can get pregnant at four months old. Four months. They can have, right now we're seeing third litters a year from our outdoor a year, cats. Third litters a year. Because the warm spells have gotten so long. I mean, we have like December and January are cold and then the rest of the year feels it's like hot. it's warm enough at some point for them to go into heat again. So we're seeing three litters a year, four to six kittens each litter. That's a lot of cats. That's a lot. So our primary focus in trying to control the need for us to be here is to be out there making sure that we're getting them fixed so mm. that the homeless kittens are not out there being born and that the communities that we're working in are not being overloaded with cats. Mm -hmm. So we did, I think around 500 last year, outdoor cats that were just fixed. outdoor, Just outdoor cats. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, just outdoor. Um, they're caught in live traps. We have trappers in different areas or we work with directly with the caretakers. Mm -hmm. We book the appointments. We do 25 every two weeks. And sometimes we'll sneak in some extra appointments. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we bring them in here, we stage them get them ready for surgery, drive them up to the clinic in the morning. Clinic is amazing. We use Nobody's Cats Foundation in Mechanicsburg mm -hmm. and they shoot through dozens of cats in a day. We pick them back up, stage them here for a couple of days for recovery and then return them to where their homes are. Wow. Now, who fronts the cost for, for those? Because I can't see that, the, you know, the, yeah, the, no. <laughs> not every vet office can just be like, yes, we would like to donate our time and materials Honestly, and things to go when, do that. When you find a good TNR clinic, so like Nobody's Cats Foundation, they charge $40 a cat. Mm -hmm. And that gets them a rabies vaccine, a distemper vaccine, revolution to treat fleas and ticks, plus the surgery, all for $40. Wow. So they're working heavily on grants and things like that to keep their operation going yeah. at that cost. Um, but they're also doing a lot of cats today. I mean, there's some days where we're up there and there's anywhere from 40 to 70 cats going through the program every single day that they work. So they do their grant raising to keep that cost low. We typically will pass off that cost to the caretakers if they can afford it. Mm -hmm. um, there are some programs in Pennsylvania that some of the caretakers that don't have the money but have a lot of cats can reach out and try and get some funding for yeah, because I'm sure there's places where it's like, you know, let's say you you have your own backyard mm -hmm. and let's say you, you know, oh, I can't care for the cats, but I just, I kind of give them food and you mm -hmm. end up having 20, uh, but you can't, you know, maybe they can't afford to get them fixed. Right, yeah, 20 times 40. Um, and yeah, even though 40 I mean, is cheap, <laughs> still a lot. yeah. So yeah, for those kind of places, we typically have them ask for funding of some sort or we'll come to terms. We do have a spay it forward program here where people make a donation to help. of $40 at a time to pay for one of those cats that somebody can't so yeah we do some they do some mm -hmm. funding does some yeah it gets spread out mm -hmm. we make now it now why is uh the tnr why is that more effective than let's say trapping all of them and then keeping them and trying to find homes for them that way most of your outdoor cats are under socialized cats mm -hmm. Finding them homes is so hard. Mm -hmm. We have a couple in the building at a time that, for whatever reason, if they can't be returned, we'll bring them in. Finding them homes is tricky. Yeah. If we did that, this whole place would be full of cats you couldn't touch. Yeah. They'd never leave. Mm -hmm. And we'd be hoarders. Yeah. So, <laughs> we don't so it's be just hoarders. not sustainable so to do something like that. It's more sustainable. You know, the other option is trap and remove. Well, yeah. there's not a magic place that wants a million cats yeah. outside. So. <laughs> Moving them isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, trapping them and euthanizing them all is not sustainable. Yeah. Um, you have what's called the vacuum effect. You re cats come to a place for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a food source. You remove those cats and the food source is prevalent. More cats More are coming come in, in. And then they're not going to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So we, we call it a managed colony. At that point, you have your little old lady or whoever's feeding the cats. <laughs> it's called the caretaker. And the caretaker is... Providing the food for the cats, the cats are fixed, they're vaccinated, they're healthier, mm -hmm. they're not having kittens, so that population over time will dwindle, mm -hmm. you know, due to naturally, naturally old age mm -hmm. or unnaturally traffic, yeah. predators, whatever. Um, eventually, they'll have less cats, but they also won't have that crazy influx of them. Them new just cats coming in all the time. This is their home and they're protecting it from mm -hmm. a bunch of newcomers.
Yeah, so they, those colon, those cat colonies kind of prevent others from coming in, kind yeah. of. Periodically, some will sneak in, but mm -hmm. it's usually not in droves. A ton. Your male cats aren't coming in to mate because the female cats are fixed. And, right. You know, they're not, the males aren't fighting with each other and they're not getting hurt. And yeah. It's just a healthier environment for them. What do you do if you, let's say you know of a colony that's somewhere, what can people do to reach out about that kind of a situation? Maybe they don't know the owner of the property or anything, but maybe they, you know, they pass by a house or somewhere and they always see dozens of cats around. Is there anything that they, you can do to, to you help have, that? You have to have the caretaker on board. Mm -hmm. Caretaker has to be okay with the cats being there or coming back if they get fixed. Mm -hmm. And they have to work with you. you know, they're the ones that know the cats. They know when they feed. They know what their routine is. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time, the caretakers are the ones trapping them. You know, okay. we're, we're offering traps. We're offering guidance. We do have a couple trappers who go on site and do things for people mm -hmm. who can't do them for themselves. Um, but typically, like in that situation, we've had that happen plenty of times where a volunteer will come and say, Oh, my gosh, Steph, we sold this place. And they go out and they talk to the people. Uh-huh. And if we can get them on board to get them fixed, then we do. Mm -hmm. If we can't, then we just we have to move on to the next place. Yeah. There's so Our, many places that need the help that we can't laser focus on the places that won't cooperate. Right. Do you find that most people are pretty cooperative about that, or that some most places? Of the time, and most of places contact us. We don't we don't tend to see a lot of places out. where we seek out. Um, so people find out about the program, they call us. Some people, all we have to do is tell them, hey, here's how you get a trap, and here's where you take them, and here's the cost, and they can do it on their own. Oh. You know, it's not, Yeah. our trappers aren't magical people. Yes. <laughs> they don't have any crazy secrets. Um, it's something any person that's able-bodied enough can do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people take it on themselves. Some people will use our appointments and do the trapping and bring them here. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we have the girls that will have to go out and do it for them. Yeah. And especially, especially your older community that... Mm -hmm. can't drive or they can't yeah. bend over to set traps and that just like likes that. to have them there they can but, throw them yeah, out, yeah. but they can't be hands <laughs> on the ground um but most of these people i mean sometimes we'll get the call and they'll say well all these cats are here and they just can't stay here well yeah i, I don't have a place to tell you to take them so yeah mm -hmm. we can help you we can fix them we can get that population under control before it gets worse mm -hmm. Because, I mean, a population, you could have 15 cats outside and it can become 40 in the first year. Yeah. You know, well, when you said at four triple. months, at four months that they can breed and if they're having three litters a year and, yeah. I mean, how many? half the how cats many? are males, half are females. Yeah. It can happen really fast. Mm -hmm. So most people, when they realize there's not a magical place that's going <laughs> to take them, will cooperate and at least try to get control. That way there's not more than what they have right mm -hmm. then and there. Yeah. Yeah. So we just worked on a girl's place that had... She contacted us, she had 30. Wow. We taught her what to do. And she has, so far, I think we only have two females left to do that are a little trap savvy. So mm -hmm. they're going to they're gonna be harder to do, but the rest of her population is not having kittens now. Mm, so now cool. she's to the point where those two moms that were left, when they had their last kittens, we were able to take them in and find them homes while she continues working on trying to trap them. Trying to get them. Mm -hmm. Now she called us and said, we have 20 mom cats and they all have kittens. We yeah we can't help with that that's yeah. too many at one time <laughs> wow. so she got it under control just in time mm -hmm. before it got worse and she's super happy about it that's great um most of our cats come from these places where we're doing these trappings so mm -hmm. I mean, we've been doing tnr since 2015 so we're we're in year eight we've worked with a lot of people yeah <clears throat> you know if mary smith we fixed all her cats eight years ago a new friendly cat shows up and she's like, this is somebody's pet, it got discarded, whatever happened, we're still in communication with those people and we take those cats take those in. in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of discarded pets we consider. We have people who donate beach towels. Beach towels. When we're doing our trap neuter return, we have to cover each trap and a beach towel is like a perfect size to uh -huh. fully cover our traps. So we do accept beach towels here. Um, hand towels, washcloths, regular towels sometimes just for our cleanings and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but most of our stuff is general supplies. We do take used cat stuff. If you have a cat that didn't, you know, didn't like the cat tree you bought it or the toy <laughs> that you bought it or the food that you got it, yeah. we'll take it. Between feeding, the, everybody's like, well, I don't know if you take this kind of food or if you take an open bag. Or We're feeding cats that are living outside. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. these, these people will use every ounce of food you drop off here, I promise you. Right. Mm -hmm. Not a single 
piece of food gets thrown away. Yeah, and at <laughs> that point in time, like any, any, you know, for outdoor cats, I'm sure it's any food is better than no food. Also, your website talks about placing barn cats, too. Oh. Uh, so what is what would be the difference between you for barn cats and feral cats, for example? They're the same thing, pretty much. So, well, typically, feral means unsocialized, mm -hmm. not able to be handled. So, yeah, the cat might rub up on your foot, but if you can't pick it up and handle it, it's not a pet cat. Yeah, it's not going to thrive well in an indoor environment. If it's, I have a barn cat who, over the top friendly, mm -hmm. found him outside, brought him in. He escaped outside. I brought him in. He escaped outside. He's not going to stay inside. Yeah. That's what he knows, and that's what he wants. Um, he'll come in, mm -hmm. but he's going to go out he's as soon as he's out. ready to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the indoor, outdoor cats, barn cats. Some cats just they get into a house. They've never had a litter box. They don't know what a litter box is. The world is their litter box, <laughs> so they want to be outside. Um, typically with our barn cat program, so when we start on a community where, you know, Maybe the caretaker passed away. Mm -hmm. Oh no, she's feeding 15 cats outside. What do we do? We're talking to the neighbors. We're trying to inch them over to the next property if yeah. we can. Sometimes there's just nobody around who will accept them. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you need to move them somewhere else. We had a hoarding situation in Franklin County that we just helped with. Um, and those girls are working their butts off to try to relocate these cats. So when people mm -hmm. apply for a barn cat through us, if we don't actively have any, we're reaching out to those trappers that are working on those projects and yeah. finding them a new kitty. So in that barn. situation that, let's say, the caretaker passed away, you would take those, let's say, those feral cats that maybe have already gotten fixed or as you trap them, then you just move them to, let's after say, fix after, after you <laughs> fix them, <laughs> then, after, yeah. then you move them to a just different property to mm -hmm. hopefully be able to yeah, we you know, do we, acclimate and, to the area. And we do an acclimation period. So during that, basically, they take an outbuilding of some sort. If they have a barn, then that's perfect. Um, somewhere where they can secure the cat. Mm -hmm. Cats, usually, we try and do them in pairs, especially if there's not an active colony. Mm -hmm. um, somewhere they can be sheltered, fed, change litter boxes while they learn the new environment. They mm -hmm. learn the sounds. They learn the person who's feeding them. Mm -hmm. And then we get a... I'd say a 75% stick around rate. Yeah. How long do you now, typically you kind of... Now, if you picked up the cat and moved it and opened the trap and let it out in a new place, it's going to be It's just going to be gone. gone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How long do you typically do the acclimation period for those We tell cats? people two to four weeks. Two to four weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depends on, you know, if the cat's still freaking out in that first two-week period, maybe it's not ready yet. Yeah. You know, they kind of... Usually two weeks is pretty substantial mm -hmm. to get that, that stick around rate. 